Welcome back to my channel guys. It's your boy Law Cannon and it's been a while since I've dropped a video. I apologize, but just for the wait, I'm about to give y'all a deluxe video. We about to do some garlic butter lamb chops with a side of lobster mac and cheese. We about to get right into it. Let's do it. So first, of course, we're going to start with our lamb chops. Now, I took these lamb chops out of the fridge about 20 to 30 minutes ago. I let them become a little bit more room temperature, and we're about to get these started. Now, what you're going to first want to do is get a paper towel and dry these lamb chops. You want to make sure these lamb chops are completely dry before we start seasoning. The reason we really want these so dry is because we want to create a really nice sear or a crust on these lamb chops, and that only happens when your lamb or steak it's dry so let's dry these boys off also before i forget if you are watching this video you have not subscribed make sure you click that button below and subscribe to my channel please subscribe guys subscribe 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 Now the first thing we're gonna add to these lamb chops is olive oil. I'm using extra virgin olive oil. You can use whatever olive oil you prefer, but this is extra virgin. You wanna make sure all of your lamb chops are properly marinated with this olive oil so we can create a really good blend of seasonings and oil. Next up, we're gonna start off with our black pepper. And this is not a lot of black pepper, trust me. It just looks like, I don't know why it looks like this. But make sure you get the pepper all over these lamb chops. Every season that we use them, you want to make sure that you are fully seasoning and fully coating each of these lamb chops. Next, we're gonna add about three to four teaspoons of minced garlic. I love minced garlic, and these are garlic butter lamb chops. So you just wanna make sure that you have enough minced garlic all over these lamb chops and make sure it's fully coated as well. Next up, the secret ingredient, we're gonna add some red hot sauce. Now you can use Frank's Red Hot, you can use Louisiana, I just prefer to use Frank's. Always thinks it adds a really good flavor to these lamb chops, but this is a key ingredient, do not forget this step. If you do not have hot sauce at home, go get some. Next, what we're gonna add is some dry rosemary. Now you do need some fresh rosemary as well, but not yet. So add your dry rosemary to these lamb chops. This is about one or two teaspoons, of course. You guys can just eye this. Um, you can't really overdo it. You can't overdo it, but it's less likely that you're gonna overdo it. Just season to your liking. Now your dry seasoning is actually done, but we're gonna do, um, before we cover this with foil, we're gonna add some fresh rosemary leaves. This is gonna give it a really good aroma. This helps the seasoning. It's just gonna create a really nice flavor. Um, and we're gonna add a, about one more teaspoon of garlic before we cover these up with some foil. And boom, set these aside for two hours. But if you don't have two hours, you can do it for like one hour. Now for our lobster mac and cheese, we're going to start off with these two 10 beautiful ounces of lobster tail that we got. So you're going to cut the lobster tail down the middle and then remove the meat. Now we want to keep this as, you know, together as possible. So let's just try to get that one good pull. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get that, get that, get that. <laughs> get that. Get that one good pull for the lobster tail uh, for both. And then we're going to season our meat and cut it up as well. So yeah, let's get this meat out these tails first. Hey, yo, Kwan. Kwan. That's you? That's you? Yeah. 
now you're going to want to cut these lobster tails um, as much as you can but you want to keep a couple of bigger pieces um, than small ones um, I didn't cut these too great just because I kind of already had an idea how I wanted this <laughs> I like bigger pieces but cut this as small as you can and then we're going to start off adding some Creole seasoning now I'm using the no salt version just because I'm going to already have salt in the macaroni and cheese so then we're going to add some black pepper once again we're seasoning to our liking so you can just say these are about one to two teaspoons of each seasoning next up we're going to add our cayenne pepper now i love to add this little kick of pepper and heat to the lobster mac and cheese because it just gives it a different type of whole flavor now you can set that aside and now we're about to start our lobster mac and cheese so of course add about two teaspoons of salt to some boiling water once the water comes to a raging boil then you're going to add your noodles and cook until they are perfectly cooked i think it's called al dente but i might be wrong but that's what it's called that's what it's called y'all now for our cheese sauce aka our bechamel for this lobster mac and cheese we're going to add one stick of butter to a pot we're going to cut it on about medium maybe a little bit under medium and we're going to stir this butter we're going to whisk this butter i'm sorry until it is completely melted <music> Now, when your butter is melted, we're going to add in the same amount of flour as there is butter and completely whisk this butter and flour mixture until it is smooth and it is not as clumpy as you are seeing this right now. So completely whisk, 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 whisk for about two minutes. Next up, we're going to add some heavy cream. This is two cups of heavy cream. You can warm this up or it can be room temperature, but we're gonna add this to this pot and continue to whisk until this is completely smooth and a creamy consistency. Now you wanna cook this just about, I'll say, maybe four, four to five minutes, but you wanna completely make sure you're whisking and you don't want this to get over thick. Like it just needs to be a good, thick, creamy sauce. And then we're gonna add in garlic powder we're going to add in paprika and of course we're going to add in our favorite onion powder you know what else we're going to sneak in some creole seasoning that no salt though no salt y'all watch some sodium levels <laughs> but okay let's continue to stir this stir this stir this stir this stir this whisk this for about three to four minutes and then we're going to add our cheeses now the cheese i'm using i have a gouda cheese i have triple cheddar cheese i have a sharp white cheddar cheese and I have some Colby cheese. Now you wanna completely add this in until your cheese is completely melted. Whisk that until it's completely melted. And if you start thinking that your cheese is a little bit too thick, add a little bit more heavy cream. If you don't have any heavy cream, you can actually use some evaporated milk. But I like the heavy cream just because with the lobster mac, I like a more wholesome, thicker um, tasting food. So yeah, that's what we're gonna start off doing. And once you see that it's completely melted, get your noodles, Add those back into the cheese and continue mixing until it is fully integrated. I started to notice that my mac and cheese was a little bit more thick than I would like, so I'm adding a little heavy cream. I'm adding about one cup of cheese, and now I'm actually gonna add our lobster pieces. Now we're gonna completely mix this all the way up, save a couple of lobster pieces, just to add on top, so um, set some aside. But let's mix all of this up, and ooh, man, some people can eat it like this. I can't. I want. I want that baked. That add the little southern feeling. But yeah, um, let's continue mixing this up. Let's continue mixing this up until it is fully integrated within each other. And boom, we're gonna add it to our pan. So before we um, even pop this in the oven, make sure you guys is up and it's preheated to 375 or 350 and make sure that you are prepared to bake this for about 30 to 45 minutes.
Now, if you want to really get special with it, you want to add that chef's kiss, add your lobster tail that you took the meat out of, add that to this mac and cheese pan, fill it with the mac and cheese, and then we're going to add our final layer of cheese on top of this, melt this, add parsley, add paprika, and you're about to make that steakhouse top level baked lobster mac and cheese. Now we got our final layer of cheese, drop that parsley, and drop that boy in the oven for them 30 to 40 minutes. Now, for our lamb chops, you want to start off with a hot cast iron skillet that's freshly oiled with olive oil. And how we're going to do this, we're going to start these off putting on the back side of the lamb chop, so the fat side. Cook that for about two minutes, and then once you see that that's almost, you know, a little browner than you it started then we're going to flip them on the side and we're going to get these lamb chops full in motion now when you are ready to flip and add these um lamb chops put them like on their regular sides what you want to do is you, as soon as you put them face down into the pan you want to basically press down on the lamb chop just so it can get a way better sear versus if you didn't do it so press down on these lamb chops as you flip them so we're gonna let these cook for about four to five minutes and after the four minutes is up just make sure you're not burning them cooking them on like medium to medium high get a really good flip on them. you see that Whew. look at that sear that's what you call a sear and that's just your first flip now are you really ready to add that steakhouse feel to these lamb chops now take a half a stick of butter pop that in that pan let that butter melt all through that pan and we're going to add some fresh thyme and some fresh rosemary now the aroma of these herbs are about to really bring these lamb chops to life Now, spoon this butter all over the herbs, all over the lamb chops, and you should be smelling some fantastic ass food right now. I'm talking about, just wait till these finish, but you might want to flip these lamb chops now and let both sides get this buttery goodness all over it, um, but make sure you're still pressing down on your lamb chop just so it can get that really good brown, dark sear. And just depending on how you want to eat these, um, I say cooking for another three to four minutes. Um, I like mine more medium well. I don't like that much pink in my lamb chops like I do my steak. But yeah, you basically done with these. Just let them cook until the desired um, time you would like. And boom, let's go look at our lobster mac and cheese in that oven too. That's exactly what I'm talking about. That's exactly how I want it. You see that cheesy goodness with that lobster. Wait for y'all to taste this. Make sure the sides are bubbling when you take it out. You can add some more fresh parsley to it. You can do whatever you want. But at this point, I've got it all to success. I've led y'all to the well. I drink that water. Eat that food. Let's it. Oh my. God, look at this plate. Look at that lobster tail with filled with the lobster mac and cheese. Add a piece of fresh rosemary to your lamb chops. Oh, I threw some asparagus on the side. You already know how to make that. But look at this plate. This is a restaurant. This is five star, but this is in your kitchen. Please, y'all, like, comment.
comment, subscribe, share, recreate this recipe. Tag me at Law Cannon on Instagram or Twitter. But thank you guys so, so much. My next video will be a very special one just because I just hit a certain milestone on YouTube and y'all will see it very soon. Also, I got a Miami vlog coming soon for you guys as well with one of my first big catering jobs in Miami. Thank you guys so much. Again, comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. We out of here.